Meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. I would ask if there's anyone else recording the meeting. Seeing none, if you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Some special recognitions this evening, Dr. Bruno. We do, Mr. Chair. So the first one, MIAA, the Mass Interscholastic Athletic Association, recognizes a female and male cross-country athlete each year based on their athletic performance, character, and community service. And very pleased to share that Emma Gervais was recognized for this honor from Auburn High School. So congratulations uh, to Emma, who certainly represents us well. In terms of the CDM, CDMMEA Honor Festival, this is a music Central Mass, uh, Central District Festival, we had several students for their music abilities, singing and instrument playing, recognized for this. So we had four of them who received high enough to qualify for the Mass All-State Festival. So Haley Norris was accepted into the band program and Olivia Kernan, Sean Campbell, Sam Benoit, Angie Davis, and Derek Brigham were accepted into the chorus piece. So also on top of those honors, Sean, Sam, Angie, and Derek received all state recommendations. So they're going to be auditioning for that in mid-January. So um, not only are they great musicians, uh, they're all great kids and, and great um, students as well. Many of them, if not all of them, were recognized at the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship Breakfast that Dr. Lose and I attended just before um, Thanksgiving. So all around great, great young men and women. And then also wanted to, um, I don't know, through the chair, if uh, Mrs. Kaufman wants to make a comment, but I know that we had many middle school and high school students who assisted with the Auburn Youth and Family Services rocket race that Mrs. Kaufman spearheads uh, and is wildly successful every year. So thank you. I, I was overwhelmed. We asked for some volunteers from the high school and the middle school, and we had over 25 kids from the high school and about 15 from the middle school. You guys continue to impress. I, you know, it was wonderful to see you guys take initiative, but also for the older kids to help the younger kids come out on a rainy day and raise. Um, it was really a record-breaking year for us this year to raise, um, you know, almost $10,000 for the hundreds of families in town that you guys serve, that or that youth and families serve. Um, so thank you so much. I really, it's an, just another example of why, you know, we do what we do. We're so proud of you guys, and it was it. We were truly blessed, and Sally extends her thanks as well. So, awesome, excellent, great event. Any comments, questions? No. Congrats, Doug. Yeah. Congratulations on raising that much money, and yeah, and thank you for doing so. I'm sure every, every penny counts. It does. Thank you. And I'm sure there were a lot of headaches involved, and and you were probably happy when it's over, but probably had a pretty good feeling about it. Thanks. Yeah, we did. We were happy when the uh, clouds parted. <laughs> <laughs> it looked rainy when I saw them running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks to everyone who was involved in that. And seeing those citizens to comments, I'm moving on to um, Ryan and Allie for student representatives' reports. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, first off, uh, after the week of meetings we had, we then had our. Uh, Thanksgiving Spirit Week leading up to the assembly where we all had a lot of fun as we competed in a lip sync between the grades. <laughs> <laughs> for that uh, for that Spirit Week, we had Grout Fit Day to begin with, and Pajama Day, then Auburn Day, and also on that Wednesday, as Dr. Brunel mentioned, was the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship Breakfast. It was a very nice way to kick off the Thanksgiving break, being able to relax and hang out with our friends. Uh, then once we got back from break, trimester one, quickly came to a close as finals were Thursday, Friday, with the try ending officially Friday and beginning second try Monday. And uh, last Friday was the tree lighting ceremony and the marching band performed. Today there was a Humanities Scholars uh, trip to Assumption College. I went and um, if you don't know what Humanities Scholars is, it's a group that's given a specific issue for 
say, the six months that we really go out and do it. Um, you go to different colleges and a bunch of other schools come together and we talk about like the specific issue, which this um, year it's youth movements. So today we went to Assumption, uh, me and 10 other kids, I believe, um, and we toured, had lunch, and it was very fun. Um, student council is getting ready for Christmas, so we've been making a five days of Christmas, so the week before break, we spoil the teachers with, say, like coffees, or we make them cards, cookies. Um, they like to decorate their doors, too, so just getting ready for Christmas and another upcoming spirit week as well. And as for Rockets to Rockets, we've been kind of not under the radar, but we haven't really gotten a kickstart yet just with everything going on. So finally, um, being on the e-board for that as well, we so we're starting to fundraise. So we're selling sweatshirt blankets um, to help fundraise for our club, as well as on December 19th, I believe, it's a Wednesday. Mm. Yes. Um, there's uh, Papa Gino's dine-in fundraiser. So from 4 to 9 p.m., um, all profits if you dine in or take out, um, it goes towards the Rockets to Rockets, or like a certain percentage goes towards it. So that'll help raise money for our club. And I think from 5 to 6.30, um, Rockets to Rockets will meet as a club and have pizza together. So mm -hmm. that'll be fun. Well, like if we wanted to go, do we need a certificate? Um, not that I know of. I believe you can just show up. But I can, <coughs> again, I can, if I can, I find out tomorrow. I have a meeting, and I can always email it okay. to the okay. school committee. I don't believe you need a slip, but if you do, it's probably there. Yeah, I know say. for the college we just have like PDFs that we just yeah. emailed out. But. Yeah. Love an excuse not to cook. <laughs> 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 Especially during the Christmas week. Yeah. 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 But yeah. Great. Any questions or comments for our student representatives? A question. Um, how do I purchase a blanket? Um, there's sheets. Um, I don't know if they handed them out there. I know Auburn High School has a handful of sheets too. I can always try and find a way to get it to you. And can and you buy them online or? No, there's a there's a flyer for it, but I can email it to you or I can um, I mean I can bring it put it in your mailbox. So through the chat, you know what I'll do is I'll um, if you can have. Um, that sent to me. I'll yeah. include in the email notification to all of the families. It goes out tomorrow. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think we may have included it before, but if you send it, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll talk to okay. Miss Renier tomorrow. Okay. Makes a good Christmas gift. I was yeah. gonna say, stocking stuffer, dinner. What else can you yeah. do? <laughs> <laughs> Free babysitting. Oh, I did. <laughs> Any other questions or comments for our student representatives? Just thank you always for your reports. Yeah, they very get, thorough. They get better and better. Yeah, you're getting really good at this. Do you want to stick around, or do you guys have some things I to do? Pick my oh. brother up. Okay. One of my class here. <laughs> what was that, Ryan? Are you making something up? <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you the help homework I have. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. We don't want to. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yeah, they. Yeah, I was definitely not that composed. Yeah. <laughs> I would um, now seek approval of the regular meeting minutes for November 13 and November 14. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for November 13th and Wednesday, November 14th. Second. Ooh. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> and now move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I wanted to just highlight for you, I know that we share throughout the year the great working relationship that we have with the town and all of its departments, but recently the fire department came and gave, according to Dr. Lopez, some great presentations to the grades three and four students, and they were able to, based on the staff, they, they rotated 17 classes through the smokehouse uh, in one day. I don't know if you saw, but it was posted to our Facebook page, some of the interactions that the firefighters had, um, not only with the students, but with the Swiss Rockets to Rockets program too, which was really, really nice. So we thank the department for their uh, ongoing collaboration with us. And staying with the fire department theme, we had the honor and great pleasure of going recently to enjoy uh, the celebration for the fire safety poster contest winners. So listed here, I'll go through and just read the names to you quickly, but this is also always a, a really fun event. It was held um, the Monday of the Thanksgiving week, 
and it's always a great surprise because they give away two bicycles. So when the <laughs> students learn, they learn that morning uh, who actually gets the bike. Um, was really very exciting, and their families are there, and they do a, a nice presentation. Chief Coleman spoke, but also uh, Lieutenant Sean Steele, who really heads up this initiative. And uh, this, the students' artwork, I will say, was really of excellent um, caliber, so really good. So congratulations to Taylor Courtney, Isabelle D'Souza, Ryder Trajanowski, Riley Darty, Natalie Eck, Charlotte Silva, Grace Foster, Karina Karas, Addison Heatwell, Kendall Johnson, Mystic Marion, and Carson Rassicott. And I believe, yes, it was uh, Mystic and Carson who were the mm -hmm. overall winners and got the bikes. And they were pretty cool bikes, actually, that, uh, mm -hmm. that were there yeah. that day. So very exciting. That's great. Question, Dr. Rinell, are these uh, artworks posted anywhere that we could see? or? So like? I did, through the chair, I did um, take pictures and we posted it on Facebook, but I think you could enlarge them and see. They were on display at the fire department, but I'd have to look and see if they go back to the schools. I'm not exactly sure or if the kids get to take them home, but sure. I can follow up and find out, but they, they did curious. a really nice, yeah, yeah. A really nice job. Okay. I think they actually did a little blurb of them on Auburn Mass Daily. I think the kids' names were, and I think he put the, on the online version anyway, he put the pictures as well. So. Through the chair they did. I did see it there too. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Let me check that out too. Any other questions or comments? No. Congratulations to those students. And, and uh, just to reiterate what, what you had said at, at the outset was that um, the great relationship that we have with, with the Auburn Fire Department, mm -hmm. and that goes for all of emergency services mm -hmm. and, and um, the, the other town departments as mm -hmm. well. So I just wanted to take that opportunity to, to appreciate, uh, to let them know mm -hmm. that we do appreciate the relationship mm -hmm. we have, whether it's the, the DPW or, or the fire department or uh, you name it, they're, they're on board with us. Mm -hmm. and DPW over the years has done so mm -hmm. much for us and, mm -hmm. and, and helping pull things together and uh, it's, it's great. They do. It's not, and uh, I've said it before, it's not like that in every town, so we're very fortunate to have this. Mm -hmm. One more comment through the chair. Um, yeah, they do it in a very tasteful way too, because mm -hmm. my daughter's in third grade and came home and taught us a lot about oh, you know how, fire safety and how yeah. to get out. But it was very matter of fact; it wasn't scary. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they have mm -hmm. great techniques over there. Yeah, they're they're doing, doing a good job. Yeah, great. we're lucky to have them. Question: Do they encourage the children to encourage their parents to practice? Yes. Yes, <laughs> which we ignored, but <laughs> we're going to. <laughs> Diagram. A diagram? Oh, yeah. yeah. She had it all mapped out for us. a place us. to meet. Oh, okay. That's great. So I wanted to congratulate uh, those individuals. The Auburn Chamber of Commerce, they are tremendously supportive of the schools, not only through the grants, but also scholarships that they give away uh, at graduation, too. So $3,000 in grants were awarded to these individuals who wrote grants, as I always do, I want to thank those whose grant was not successful because it takes as long to, to write an unsuccessful or unfunded grant, I should say, than, than a funded one. But congratulations to, from the high school, we had Maria Barrios, Ali Janess, and Michelle Prunier. From the middle school, Amy Berg and Pat Bazella, Jared Kahn, Megan Govin, and Tammy Bailey, and Stephanie Sala. From Bryn Mawr was Haley Dowd and Emily Wild Group. At PAC was Elisa Lemire and Liz Dayhall, as well as Julie Benoit. And at Swanson was Sarah Cannell, Anne Shane, Alicia Lapamato, Sue Krikorian, Megan Berg, and Jamie Nicopoulos. So they did a great job in writing those, and we thank the Chamber for their support. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. In terms of the CPR AED, just wanted to give you uh, a brief update around this. You know of our ongoing initiative here in the middle school held a really uh, extremely well planned under um, Denise Collins, who is the uh, PE Health Department Chair across the grades. They held a wellness day where students were did went through their screenings, their posture, their height, and their weight. They also did some physical activity. All students were trained in hands-only CPR, um, were trained also in the AED. So really a great initiative. And what we're working to do is for the upcoming holiday craft fair, we were just talking with Mrs. Collins today. We're actually going to be seeking four to five middle school volunteers and four to five high school volunteers. Um, we have Mr. Young coming out from the American Heart Association. We're going to have some firefighters there so that when people come in, they can be trained in hands-only CPR. It really takes literally minutes to do it. It's endorsed 
by the American Heart Association. So our goal is to try and have 2,000 people trained by our February CPR AED meeting. And with the 600 that we've done at 625 or 626 at the middle school, adding the high school, we've got lots of people trained around um, the district. Hopefully adding in not only the holiday craft fair, but we're going to be bringing it to basketball games on Saturdays at Swiss and at the middle school. So when people come in to watch a basketball game, they can go and learn how to do hands on the CPR and the AED too. So wow. we're excited that it's it's moving forward in a positive direction. That's great. Wanted to make you aware of something a bit less exciting. Um, this is our year of reviews and audits and such. Mm -hmm. So Mrs. King was recently notified um, that they will be coming in to do a procurement audit. Um, these are regular, they happen on a, a regular schedule. So they will be coming to the Auburn Public Schools this year. We will keep you apprised um, when that happens. But with any of these audits, and I know Dr. Lose is going to share something to this effect. It just takes a tremendous amount of time up front and in preparation of it. It's just um, almost an unreasonable amount of time, quite honestly, mm. in pulling together documents. But um, but they are they are underway. We can say it's unreasonable. Okay, it is. We have our full support. Dr. Lose may say that. Yeah. How long is the actual <laughs> audit? How long does it take place, the whole process? So um, through the chat, it varies based on how long they're going to come. So they have come in the past. I don't know that they've done this audit necessarily for food service, but sometimes it could be a day that they come. It could be three days. It could be a week. Oh. But Dr. Lizay may have more information about that. Um, and, you know, but they may be on site for that amount of time, but they are taking, they have to submit a tremendous amount of documents through the portal in advance, mm -hmm. and those are reviewed by them, and then they come out in. in I mean, with an audit, they're looking for problems or issues mm -hmm. that you may have. And uh, while I am certain that we do things um, in, in exemplary fashion, I won't be surprised if there will be some things that they find that we need to change or tweak, and, and we will, you know, come up with a correct. And is that all plan. falling on Mrs. King? So she yeah. and, and her assistant um, for that one piece. So they're doing the procurement uh, audit piece. Dr. Lose's got well. She report on her things. Mrs. Reedy's special education on it. So, it you know, oh, okay. but it does largely fall on the director or administrator's mm -hmm. shoulders. Wow. It does. It's a yes. wonder that we were able to survive with the food services that we had growing up in schools yeah. without. Yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. Tater tots and Coke. Yeah. You know? yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Very fortunate to make it through. <laughs> Very true. The next item is brought back for you for your consideration, the CIPs from 2017 to 2024. If you remember a couple of meetings back, we brought forward, uh, it didn't include the, the 17 and 18 ones because those had previously been approved, but I believe it was from 20 to 24. And in meeting with Town Manager Jacobson and Mr. Kazanovich, they expressed concern about uh, the level of requests that we had in 2024. They have uh, a plan in place and hoping to keep um, the school department somewhere in the $800,000 range or thereabouts. Now what I will share with you is <clears throat> we're actually, in looking at these from 17 to 24, we're actually getting some additional things accomplished. We are pushing off, and I apologize, in um, the memo here, it says that the Swiss underground tank is being pushed off. That's not mm -hmm. accurate. I think this was a incorrect final version that went out. Uh, it's actually the central office underground tank. Oh. But if I can just um, point out to you some of the changes. So if you remember with the MSBA partnering with us uh, for over 50% reimbursement for the Pakachog roof, we're able to repurpose. Now, because these are from fiscal years prior, it will require town meeting approval. But typically, um, I've not ever seen it was an instance where it was any issue. So what we would propose to do to utilize that money is we'd put almost 128000 towards the Swanson underground tank removal. That was planned for 2024. That work will actually get completed. You'll see it sprinkled out a few from across a few years, that'll get completed in 2021. 
Another thing that is new, if you look on the 2018 CIP, this was not on any year's CIP. We're actually going to be replacing the UN events at Pakachog School. And this was done all with meeting with Mrs. Forsbicki and Mr. Fahey and I. So that's an added benefit that we're going to get. And also a new item is a district van. Um, the van that we have is utilized literally every day. And we believe that if we are to get a second one, we'll be able to even help eventually reduce some of our um, athletic costs. So for some of the smaller ones, when Allie reported about the Humanity Scholars Group, they, and I don't know whether they were able to use it today or not to go to Assumption College, but it's in conflict because our, with our um, programming up at the high school where the kids go out for their work um, experiences, the van is needed for that. If we had a second van, rather than hiring AA, which is expensive, it's a con contract yeah. price, um, Mr. Dufour would have been able to drive the students to Assumption. They all go through a training uh, process. So I, we think that's a, a good benefit um, to us. So the other item in, in 18 is more money towards the underground tank removal. And I will say, too, that Mr. Fahey recently had, uh, we hired uh, La Mountains out of Charlton, and they came and did assessments on our underground tank. So of those, we're actually going to be putting off the central office um, one. There aren't any changes in 19. In 20, with the roof project, we were actually able to do the entrance. It's an ADA entrance now to Pakachog. It's the um, gradual um, slope of the concrete, the walkway out front. We will be, um, we increase the amount, I think, Mrs. Harrington, you may have mentioned a, a concern or a question about would the 60000 be enough to resurface the tennis courts and some of the other work there. So we've increased that um, by 20000 in 2020. <coughs> in 21, um, we'll see that's when the Swiss underground oil tank will come out of the ground. And what we realized um, in the original amount, we had $80,000 anticipated to resurface the track that um, surrounds the football field at Auburn High School. In getting new quotes, updated quotes, because that's based on the last time that we did it, it's going to be more in the $260,000 mark. So we reprioritized monies because if you'll recall, the lease payment for the field, the town's going to pay $300,000 up front out of stabilization. And what we had in, we were able to repurpose for other reasons. So we now have, and it will be completed in 2023, enough money to resurface the track based on numbers now and, and projections that Mr. Fahey, uh, we won't know into what to bid at that time, but, but feels comfortable that we should have enough. And we were also able to put an additional $20,000 in 21 towards equipment um, purchases, usually replacement things. You see in 22, that's where we have some additional money in there for the high school track. And then the final payment is in 2023. The Swanson Road HVAC upgrades, we should by then be in great shape. We're actually, Mr. Fahey is procuring um, bids now to do the gymnasium area, I mean, excuse me, to do the auditorium area to take care of that. So we'll be in great shape. So the one thing that you'll see that is being pushed off is the removal of the central office oil tank, and that would go to 2025, and that value is about 280000 to do that. So it is, it is my recommendation um, that you approve these, understanding and recognizing that, you know, I think it, it shows on the school committee's part that you are giving in here. I know we've had budget presentations and we're at about a 4.1 percent and, and you know, I think the positions in there are ones that were demonstrated by the leadership team and I think supported by you that, that, that we need. So I think that based on what we get, by being able to, and it will require time meeting approval, but I'm confident that we will be able to make the case to them um, that we're actually getting some things and putting off the oil tank for central office 
is something that Mr. Fahey feels is is okay for us to do. Questions. Um, is it a health concern, the oil tank, the underground oil tanks? Is that why they need to come out? Or? So through the chair, um, it's my understanding that they, they have a life expectancy and you want to make sure that they don't leak because then you have a, a bigger problem and things. So, um, but we would be replacing them with underground tanks once they, once they come out. The one at Pagachog can come out and that's a much less cost. I think it was maybe for $80,000 but it's because we're not going to need to put another one in because we converted to gas wow. several years ago uh, that went up the street there. I think it's, uh, actually it's, I'm sure it's 80. Do you see? Yeah, I think I believe I think it got placed under Swiss instead of the seventy eight thousand to underground. Oil. Yeah, because Swiss is oh. listed a couple times. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it should have been. I think it was just a typo um, on page two under twenty eighteen. Okay, you've got more time. underground oil tank removal. No, it's actually in twenty twenty. Um, to remove the underground oil tank and package up for eighty thousand. Oh, okay. oh yeah. The oh. Oh. it's spread out the cost for Swiss, which is anticipated to be about two hundred eighty thousand okay. dollars, is spread out over several years. But rather than waiting until twenty twenty four, this will have it completed in twenty twenty one. Okay. One more question sure. about the central office one. Don't we share this building with another? With the fire department. Yeah. So I mean, can we share the cost with them? Um. You know, that, that's a good question. I, I do know that we have an arrangement that's been long standing and it has to do with one pays the heat and one takes care of the electricity, but I'd have to get the details and be reminded of that from Mr. Fee, but I can get that information and share that with you. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I can certainly ask that. To the chair, what's the, um, do we know what the expiration is for the central office tank? I, I, I know it can be a huge cost if it does in fact leak. Uh, agreed. I don't know if we got that level of detail mm -hmm. from the report, but I, I can follow up with Mr. Fahey and get back to you on that. Yeah. Any other comments or questions regarding the amendments to the CAP? Seeing none, I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the amendments to the FY 2017 through FY 2024 CIPs as presented. So I have a second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 That's a vote. The, and I, uh, through the chair, I'll get that information and get back to you on those. Um, the next item, this has actually become a tradition that we have put this in here. So I know that we talk often and, and believe it to be true that we get tremendous support from the Auburn community, but we likewise um, return that favor. I think that uh, it's a great lesson for our students to live and breathe every day. Our staff really exemplifies that. Our students, as you heard from Mrs. Kaufman, um, take those lessons to heart. So this is really just a snapshot of ways that we believe as a district we help give back to the Auburn community in a variety of ways, believing we should do so. Um, but very, I, I know when I look at this list, I'm just so proud because I know the different things that happen throughout the year, but when you see it compiled in a list like this, it's really pretty magnificent, I think. It's quite mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't it? Pages. I don't know how they squeeze that into a school year. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. Well, the year's not even over yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It's only just down the second trimester. <laughs> That's only the first part of the packet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. It's impressive. It really is special. You know, this mm -hmm. is something they'll take through the rest of their life. Right. And, you know, really changes the person. So yeah. That's fantastic. So a couple of donations that we received. Mrs. Stinnick let us know that uh, Package High School received a $100 donation from the New England Kids Pediatric Dentistry. They had participated in collecting and donating uh, some excess Halloween candy. So it is my recommendation that you accept that donation. And there is letters in the packet of thanks already sent. I would extend that motion. 
I recommend the motion to accept the donation of $100 to Pack Track School for New England Kids Pediatric Dentistry. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Thank you. I think it's great through mm -hmm. the chair, mm -hmm. the idea. Um, you know, I'm still trying to get rid of Halloween candy in my house, so. Um, there you go. Giving back like that is just wonderful. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then also another uh, donation that came from Bemis Farms Nursery. They had participated in the Scarecrows for Solutions program. Um, so Bemis had made some scarecrows, so they donated $30 uh, to the Packet Jack School. Nice. I would entertain a motion to accept that donation. I make the motion to accept the $30 donation from Bemis Farms. Do I second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then finally, annually, um, we receive, the third grade students receive uh, dictionaries from the Auburn Webster Lodge of Elks, and once again, they have provided those, so it is my recommendation that you approve those with Dr. Lopez having sent a thank you. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the donation of dictionaries for every third grader attending Auburn Public Schools from the Auburn Webster Lodge of Elks. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? No, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we now move on to unfinished business. So as we typically do, we will put the 2020 <coughs> draft budget on the agenda up through and including January 9th when you'll need to um, vote to send it, that draft forward. At this point, I think that we hold steady with the budget that's been drafted and then wait and see and hopefully um, Governor Baker will come out with some good news. We did hear at the Worcester County Superintendents Association meeting yesterday, Tom Scott, who's the executive director of MASS. He spoke to us and shared that they're hopeful, we're hopeful that there will be some movement on the foundation budget recommendations, which really are to revisit how they fund schools, particularly I reported a few years ago regarding health insurance, but also the circuit breaker funding and, and special education costs in general. So he seemed hopeful from what he's hearing at the State House that they may be ready to make some movement on it, probably not fully so, but uh, with Auburn's increase in enrollment that we saw this year and coupled with hopefully some um, uh, uh, positive finances at the state level. Hopefully we'll see a, a nice increase in Chapter 70. So I, at this point, I think we wait and see what comes. I just have a question on that, if I might. In one of the presentations, uh, I believe it was Pat Kachog and Bryn Mawr, presented that they would like to share a full-time permanent mm -hmm. substitute teacher. Mm -hmm. The salary um, that they were coming up with was what we would currently pay a day-to-day -day call sub. Mm -hmm. It came to like 8,000 at one school and 8,000 mm -hmm. at the other, or 8,100. Right. Right. Um, all I could think of is if we're trying to hire a permanent person, mm -hmm. uh, $16,000 for the year is extremely low. Mm -hmm. um, Walmart pays 19,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering if there was any consideration to coming up with a more realistic figure for that. Mm -hmm. um, as it seemed like a very worthwhile idea, but I, I just think if you're expecting a college graduate to come in for that kind of money with the hope that someday they'll be a permanent teacher, mm -hmm. I, to me that salary is taking advantage of them. Mm -hmm. or even the permanent sub, the amount we pay the permanent subs, because mm -hmm. they can increase. It would be more than that. It would right. be more than that. Right. So. I was doing the math on that, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah, yeah I would have to agree well. with that as well. I know, yeah. um, especially with um, extended absences, which we've had some issues with. Mm -hmm. um, kiddos are having multiple subs in classrooms without um, any assistance in the class, just because mm -hmm. it's not a kindergarten class. Yeah. Um, and that's, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fearful that that's going to cause a reduction in learning for these kids and cause them to have trouble in future years especially if we don't have somebody with high caliber in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought of it from two roles. If I was a college graduate hoping to be hired as a teacher someday and I got that job, I'd be very happy, but that salary's kind of... Mm -hmm. It's not kind sustainable. Of, no. You can't live on that. No, it's not. Um, 
And the other thing is Dr. Brunel sent out a very nice, nice letter to the retirees mm -hmm. trying to recruit us to come back and sub. Mm -hmm. And the letter's so good I still have it and I reread it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure some of the others maybe I hope have taken advantage of it, but I don't want to get up in the morning. <laughs> so through the chair we, we do <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. <Yeah. laughs> we we are, are striving to beef up our sub list. And we did reach out to all retirees, teachers and, and IAs and ABAs. We we've had two who have come in and, and have signed on, which is great. Oh, good. Um, but we are we collect data and I, I have another list going now from all local school districts and all of them are saying that they're all having this, this issue. challenge. So we are working on that. But but to your point, um, if you would like, I could return <coughs> at the January, uh, well, our next school committee meeting, I should say, with a recommendation, even if we were to use that $150 amount, I think we'd be looking at $27,000. Yeah. Uh, and, and one of the thinkings was around this, that the individual will be eligible for health benefits, yeah. which is um, something that our day-to-day -day substitutes don't get. Right. So that, that benefit coupled with the salary. But, I, but I, I hear your point. If it's the will of the committee, I can certainly do that. Um, I'm OK with you having a look at it, at least. Okay. Um, Reassessing and checking the numbers. I mean, health insurance is worth a lot in itself. So, it is. I mean, if they're getting that, then you gotta. But on the other hand, if it's a young out of college graduate, they're not 26 yet, so they can still be on their parents. Mm -hmm. So, parents th that's, huh? If their parents them. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I think they deserve more money than I, I would agree um, through the chair it sounded like they really wanted a baccalaureate prepared person yes it did mm -hmm. um, and so you know I just think it's it's highly highly needed especially at that young age um, to have someone more permanent in there and to get someone good we're gonna have to pay them yeah it's worth um, bringing it back to the leadership team for a conversation what is our first year um, new teacher salary up to? So I think next year I want to say it's forty-seven five. Okay, somewhere in there. So maybe it's not going to be that high, but it ought to be. No, I don't think we mm -hmm. should approach that no. number. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we could have a roving teacher that's oh, yeah. time mm -hmm. on salary, and, mm -hmm. and they yeah. sort of fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. It's tough. It's tough when you talk about um, the dollar amount because we're still paying um, our regular sub pool um, with, the, with the funding that mm -hmm. we would be putting into this person's salary. Mm -hmm. But I understand what, what you're saying. Yeah. We're not going to get someone who's going to come in and buckle down and say, "Okay, this is where I'm staying for a while." It's just it's yeah. not enough for that money, and I don't know that it's I don't know that it's going to happen for for twenty five thousand dollars because. Um, as soon as something else opens up, they're going to be gone, and then we're going to be dependent on that sub pool um, <coughs> that we also have to fund. The chair, aren't they technically permanent subs, though? Really? I mean, that that position would be a permanent, a floating permanent sub. Through the chair, that that would be the intention would be to have somebody where they would be split. I, I think to your point. Um, Mrs. Bacrellis, I think that they would likely hire someone not the permanent sub because they'd be sharing that position. So they'd bring somebody in for some of the long term absences. So this would be more to cover those day to day ones because they they're struggling mm. and, and Dr. Lose continues to have sub training sessions. They're struggling to get enough people in to cover people in their absences, teachers and IAs. Um, but teachers being our priority, obviously. But I, I will come back. I, I will take a look at and it. And what I'm see. talking about when I, when I say a full-time employee, a full-time teacher, is someone that, that we're putting everything into. We're giving them all the professional development. They're becoming a part of our team. They're going to be full-time. They have a future with, uh, with us. They're not going anywhere else. They're not a substitute. So I just think once we get to a certain point and you're talking fifteen, twenty thousand 20000 more dollars to you hire a full-time staff member, <laughs> So then through the chair, one, forgive me if this is silly, but would we then consider putting this high rate into the same pool as we do as the teachers in terms of contracting? So when they go, like, would they fall under, you know, 
would they fall within the union? Would they go under that, or would this just be a one-off employee? And through the chair, I would recommend that they not go mm. into the teachers' union. Okay. Um, I think that, you know, certainly it could be structured. They would have an individual contract. They would have benefits, and they'd have some sick time, obviously, some personal time, bereavement and such. But I would recommend putting them on an individual contract and not part of the teacher's contract because then they'd be subject to the teacher's salary scale. Right. And I think that an individual who's required to do planning both short-term and long-term a permanent a, a sub, let's just call them a sub, um, when they go in, they're, they're not required to do that type of planning. They're taking someone's plans and implementing them. When they go and when you agree to the 150 um, for those over 30 days in one position, they're now doing the planning on their own. The teacher's seemingly at home, incapacitated in the hospital or, or what have you. Um, they're interacting with parents and things, whereas a day-to-day -day sub is not responsible for that. Right. I was going to say that they don't yeah. have to make the plans. Correct. They don't have to meet with parents. Right. They don't really have to respond to the emails right. and all of that, right. uh, the special conferences. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of the things that someone else is doing for them, Right. which is why they wouldn't be a, a first-year teacher salary. Right. Right. But yeah. I think they deserve a little more respect than yeah. $16,000. Okay. I'll definitely look at that and bring that back. I'll add that to our agenda for and our next meeting. Through the chair, I have one other question. Would this individual, just in terms of giving them an opportunity to make more money, would they still be eligible to help out with some of the clubs? And for some of our clubs, we have stipends that attend, the, especially after school programs. Mm -hmm. that It might be a lot of money, but would we try to they make would. them eligible and, for that? And we're mm -hmm. always looking for um, people to staff in our satellite, our galaxy yeah. programming. Um, mm -hmm. So they, they would have those opportunities. At both primary schools, they do after school clubs that they offer to staff, so they would be eligible to do that okay. too. Yes, okay. for sure. Okay, thank you. Maybe if we had a range um, in which to, to work with, then it could be dependent on the individual as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, through the chair, I totally rescind the comment on the the permanent sub wage. Mm -hmm. There's a huge difference between what they do sure. day to day and what this person would the expectations would be. I think health insurance is a pretty positive yeah. perk yeah. It, it's in it, itself. Yeah. So it and you gotta get someone that's flexible and able to fly by the seat of their pants right. because yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. you never know what's gonna happen when you go in. Right. <laughs> okay. Thanks for those comments. Sure. Right. Bulletproof jacket. <laughs> <laughs> How about my experience being called Betty White when I arrived? <laughs> I was announced as Betty White is here. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, and I was younger then. <laughs> Still wasn't Betty Davis. <laughs> so in terms of the school committee tour of the schools, uh, if you're still interested in that, the only um, scheduled day, and if it works, we can certainly make it work, um, the 13th is um, Tamanage Jacobson op is open house. I don't know if any of you have any intention to attend that, but... Um, we could certainly make it work, and actually sometimes we get through the schools in the morning. So it's up to you if you would like to do this and which day works. Yeah, through the chair, the 12th is the AYFS yeah. meeting, oh, right. breakfast oh, meeting, right. so I don't know if that would work. Yeah. I usually goes to about 10, so. I'm free any of those days, and I can even get up if I have to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the 11th works best for me, but I'm like, I'm totally fine. <laughs> I can do either Tuesday or Thursday. Me too. Oh, yeah, Thursday is fine too. I don't know if I would like yeah. this. I mean, if, if that would be easier for us to go, then I'll go to the open house straight from the tour. If that's easier. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, the tour goes all day, though, doesn't it? It's usually. Well, we usually it's did long. lunch at a school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if we did like a Tuesday, then you could do both if you wanted. I thought someone said they weren't available on Tuesday. Is that you? No, I could do Tuesday. I could do Tuesday. I'm going to use Thursday. Thursday. That's really good. Tuesday. Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Looks like Tuesday. Perfect. I'll email you, and typically what we do is start here, and then we'll, we'll go. We'll create a schedule. Okay. Sounds great. Okay, we now move on to new business. So just noted for you the holiday concerts. The first one is tomorrow night for third grade, and they go right through 
the 18th. Uh, there are some snow dates planned in there, hopefully not needed. But truly, if you need a jolt to get in the holiday spirit, attending one of the concerts will certainly mm -hmm. do it. So I yeah, encourage you to do so. Uh, as I said, Town Manager Jacobson invited all of you to the open house from 12 to 2 on the 13th. And then finally, in the past couple of years, we have the committee has decided to not have the meeting right before the December break. So I put it on here for your consideration if you chose to do so. If there's nothing pressing, um, I see no reason why we need to hold the meeting and should something come up, I think we could always address it at that point. I'm fine with that. I agree. Okay. I would entertain a motion to postpone that meeting or maybe part of another meeting. Okay. I'll make a motion to cancel the school committee meeting of December 19th. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's vote. And then finally, the list of uh, various upcoming events, parent conferences were held uh, last night, and we continue to stay very busy, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. We sure do. Okay, teaching and learning. Dr. Lose? We have a few things this evening to update you on as our student reps mentioned yesterday was a half a day for them but it was a full day for our staff so we had parent teacher conferences for the teachers in grades pre-k to eight see that they were very busy they have one after another as some of you might have attended some of those mm -hmm. at the high school level staff engaged in two different activities one group of teachers worked with our restorative justice consultants and then another group of teachers tuned up their teaching is what they called it and really what they what they did during that time was to really review their objective writing looking at their activators and summarizing activities and then they all really engaged in a focused act uh, discussion around student engagement and what that really looks like in a classroom versus maybe just student compliance so it seemed like it was beneficial across the grades for everybody for that half day so it was great and our next one will be on January 18th great. and as Dr. Brunel mentioned this is the year of reviews mm -hmm. so <laughs> the Department of Elementary Ed and Secondary Ed or DESE as we call them conducts monitoring reviews of various programs every six years and this is Auburn's sixth year. Mm -hmm. So currently we're undergoing reviews in special education, civil rights, English language learning, and then we were recently notified that Title I, Title IIA, and Title IV will also be reviewed. Oh so, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> last year as part of the self-assessment uh, self phase, which is the first phase, the district, as Dr. Brunel mentioned, had to submit just a multitude of documents, around 35 to 50 different indicators. Oh, so goodness. there were written narratives, but there were also pieces of evidence that we had to submit. So that was a very time-consuming task, but fun. I'm sure we all agreed it was fun. <laughs> so based on that, they then send back some preliminary information, at least to the special education department. And now they will come on site for some on-site visits, which will include interviewing staff, interviewing parents, visiting schools, observing in classrooms, and also asking for additional documentation to make sure that it wasn't just the documents we sent that verify it, but that we have something else to show that as well. That's scheduled for the week of January 7th, and we've been notified it will only take two days, so that's not too, too bad. Um, and you know, as much as it's a time-consuming event, it's very eye-opening for us as we go through the self-assessment and we can say, you know, we could do this a little better. So we're already making improvements even prior to them coming. So once they come and they do that, they will send us a written report back. And then if there's any areas that we need some improvement, we'll just write some corrective action plans. They give us a certain amount of time, a deadline, and it's really pretty painless at that point. So. We'll keep you updated as we go through this fun process. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wish we could take part in that. <laughs> <laughs> sure that sounds great. To do. <laughs> Any comments or questions for Dr. Lose? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the update. I don't envy you at all. Yeah. <laughs> and now everyone's favorite part of the evening. <laughs> this is my show. Good evening. Um, we, I've included in your packet a year-to-date budget report dated November 29th. Um, in addition to that, we've also provided a listing of budget transfers within the same series and between series, which will require your approval. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. If you have any. any questions? 
on. So can you get approval for the a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the transfers between the series as presented by the business manager. Do I have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And last Thursday, um, November 29th, I attended the opening of the heating oil bid for the Crunch River Collaborative Group on behalf of Auburn Public Schools. Unfortunately, there was only one bid proposal, and after careful review by the group, we found that some of the language that was submitted as part of the proposal did not meet the um, did not meet what we had put out as a um, as the bid. So we, we decided not to accept the bid. It was not accepted. It was thrown out. Um, <coughs> the group as a whole agreed to redo the invitation to bid. Um, we're going to have a new opening date of January third. So I'm hoping to have more information for you in a January meeting on what our oil prices will be for um, 2020. So okay. Currently, um, right now for 2019, our oil will be $2.06 per gallon. So, wow. so hopefully Good it won't question. go too much higher. <laughs> Do they just lock us in year by year? Do you have to revisit this every year, or is it like a yes, long term? Yes, we usually do. And um, we had, um, we had bid really early on 19, so we knew 19's way way out of the gate. But we decided with the market being so it was fluctuating yeah. so much that we decided to wait. And we're hoping that it's going to work to our benefit. But we had one bidder, and hopefully with the next one we might get a couple more. We were going to, um, Ian Bosslip from French River was going to be reaching out. We're going to be advertising it, but they were, she was going to reach out to the vendors again and just let them know that we were reacting. So. So hopefully we'll have some good news. Yeah. Is there any concern that oil may go up between now and the next bit? Uh, no, we had looked at the, the market um, costs and they were pretty, you know, wasn't too high at that point. So we're hoping not, but I mean, you never. Yeah, you never. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering but if the, it, You know, we just couldn't accept the bid as it was presented. They had yeah. some language in there that just really didn't fit what we were asking for. So we couldn't. Really you know, feel good about doing that. So yep. we'll do it. Hopefully, we'll keep our fingers crossed, so I'll let you know. Okay. On Wednesday, November 28th, I attended the town's budget kickoff presentation to the Finance Committee. CFO Casanovitz provided a budget timeline for the FY 2020 budget and discussed budget projections. His assumption is using all prop two and a half um, with wages at a 2% increase. Um, and all of the lines being level funded. Revenue and new growth are up slightly, and debt exclusions are decreasing. I think he talked about the high school definitely aging out. Um, I believe it was, he said it was going to be in 2024 that it will be done. We'll be done paying for the high school, and then the middle school, we have about 16 more years to pay. Um, revenue, and, so I did say that already. <laughs> I've included the presentation documents in your packet for your perusal. And then lastly, I've included your packet of copy of the warrant tables signed by Mrs. Holloway on the dates of October 30th, November 6th, and November 27th for your information. And that's my report. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you for that report. Okay, Excellent. You. As always, and we now move on to policies. So included in your packet, the first 10 policies, as you can see there, eight of the 10 have no changes to them at all, but we are asking for you to approve them so that way we show that they have been updated. The two that do have changes, they're noted as tracking changes in red. These came uh, from recommendations from MASC, but I've carefully reviewed all of them and they are in alignment with what we do in, in our practice as a school committee your practice, I should say. But it's my recommendation that you approve as presented. I would understand that motion. I'll make a motion to approve the above named policies as presented. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This vote. And then additionally, there are two new uh, policies. This actually is part of the Title I and EL reviews. We have a supplement not supplant for Title I. This extends it to Title IIA and Title IVA. So it is my recommendation you approve on first reading. I will stand that motion. Make a motion to approve policies IPA and IPB on first reading. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.
And do we need an executive session? We do not. We do not. Okay, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Good night, everyone. Last night.